Uh, so basically, we are just going to do a power hour with you guys. Like, each of us is going to take one topic and walk you through how we uh, do our power hour and just share with you exactly what we do and some scripts and things like that. And, you know, if you have a question, this is very informal. I hopefully some more people are going to hop on. Uh, but if you have a question while one of us is talking, just raise your hand or type in the chat bar and we can see that and, and answer your questions. So um, Jade is actually going to kick it off with uh, like how to expand your market, ex uh, finding new friends, things like that, and how she does that. So um, I'm going to mute everyone but Jade. Hold on. And mute myself. A note section, because that's where I wrote down what I wanted to go over. But um, so the way that I invite and find new people to reach out to is, um, well, I do it through Facebook and through Instagram. And there's two different ways that, um, that you have to do that on, on, on those. So like Facebook, Sometimes when I'm scrolling through Facebook, you will see how Facebook will recommend people for you, like people that you may know. And so I hate to judge a book by its cover, but this is where I judge a book by its cover. I'm like, oh, she's cute. She, or, you know, if she like has like a selfie or anything, I'm like, okay, she, she might be someone that would be interested in what I'm doing. And um, a lot of times I'll just add them that way and I check out their pages and I let I see what they're into and I'll send, you know, if they um, respond to my friend request, I'll just send them a message and said, hey, thanks for the follow. And then I say something about something I saw on their page. But anyway, so I, I do that through Facebook to add friends is by um, the what Facebook already, you know, they, um, people you may know, they, they show you that on your, um, while you're scrolling. But anyways, um, also another way that I do, um, add friends through Facebook is friends of friends. So, um, when I have people, when I say like comment and, um, tag three friends, if I have a post like that, then, um, usually they'll tag friends that I'm not friends with. And so I will go to their page and I'll friend them. And then now I have their following from people through recommendations, or I'll just go to a friend's page and I will look at their friends and I will friend people through that way as well. And, um, that's kind of how I do it on Facebook is, um, if I know somebody's liking my stuff, I go, you know, my stuff a lot. I go to their personal page and I add my um or add the friends through them if that makes sense thumbs up if you get it okay awesome um then through instagram i use a lot of hashtags if i'm like if i put hashtag fitness then i'll click on hashtag fitness and um you'll see all these photos that come up and i will you know scroll through those and i'll some of them are already beach body coaches so you have to be careful of that but um, I will scroll through those and I'll click on the ones that I think that um, would fit me that would kind of fall into my niche and um, I will friend them and I will send them a message and say, Hey, I love all your fitness posts. You're really encouraging. And I just thought I would add you because um, I love fitness too. Da, 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 da. And um, try to get a conversation or something going in that direction. Another way that um, I've recently started adding friends to Instagram is I'm a teacher. So there's a lot of teachers out there who have like their Instagram pages for teaching and, um, they share what they're doing in their classroom. Like they have names like I teach first grade or surviving second grade, you know, da, da, da. And so since I can relate to them as a teacher, I will request their, you know, their fault or I'll like follow them. And then usually you know, send them a message and say, oh, I love the idea that you did with your, um, your bulletin board. Where did you get, you know, something on there? And they, they'll usually respond and tell me, you know, where they got it. And, um, and we just start a conversation that way because they want to get noticed for all their teaching ideas and all that stuff because they do the teacher pay teachers. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but they just make up these cute handouts and all kinds of stuff and they sell them on this account and so anyways we make that connection and I friend them that way so for example 
let's say if you were a runner or a dog mom and you could follow other dog moms and reach out and talk about your dogs and then friend them that way and you can literally meet people across the world just doing doing stuff like that so that's how i add friends on instagram and one tip that i give with instagram is when you send a message to someone who is not your friend you have to approve their message so be looking for that because you can miss their message and they respond to you and you don't even know it that's happened to me a couple of times and i've um, missed out on selling a challenge pack because of that. So that's the only thing that I'm kind of like, eh, about. Oh, one more thing I do on Instagram. Like, for example, if you have, um, if there's a boutique that you follow on Instagram, you go to their followers and I'll add all their followers. And I'll, so that's what I do on how to expand my market. Is that a day too, like when you're talking about boutiques or places you order from, I've shared this a long time ago, but like if you like it, car, do you order from Carla story? Yes. From her? So like uh -huh. if I wear one of her tanks and I tag her in it, they will like, what do they do to me? They'll like, how hi like highlight you in one of their posts. And okay. so like, if you post something and tag them, then they might like share your post and tag you in it and all their followers will start to follow you too. That's happened to me mm -hmm. a couple of times. That's really cool. Um, so like if you, like if you have something, a brand or something that's kind of unique, mm -hmm. obviously if you like tag gap or something, it's not really going to do anything, right. but like, you know, something that kind of smaller, more boutique -y, like you said, um, that's a really good way. And, um, you know, like she, uh, cross training couture, you can do a feature me CTC hashtag mm -hmm. and they will, like share your post and feature your post too. So gotcha. that's, a good that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, wait, who is next? Who is next? Oh, wait, uh, Tracy's not coming. I don't think she had connecting. I think, hold on guys. Sorry. We're a little hot mess here. Um, okay. Tracy and connecting. Do you guys all just want to share like what you do to connect with people? Like when you do find those new people or does anybody want to add to what Jade said? Like, do you, do you expand your market in a different way? Does anybody want to add to that? She talked about like friends suggestions on Facebook and like friends of friends and Instagram and how she did that. Does anybody want to add to that? Christy, hold on. Let me unmute you. The other night when I did that live power hour on uh, dream team, uh -huh. Um, I thought something was really interesting. This girl had the rule of 15 and if they have 15 friends or she has 15 friends or more in common, like that's it. And I have been real hesitant, you know, and a little like a creeper or you know, some people like, how do you know my sister? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Mm, so that I was like that makes sense because if you have 15 friends in common like it's kind of hard to like say did she just give me a friend request because that like she was like I look at their profile picture if they don't look crazy or I can't tell their coach we have 15 friends in common bam send it out yeah. this girl's got like 5,000 connections you know and so um anyways I started doing the rule of 15 because it doesn't make me feel as like creeper you know <laughs> and these are people I would probably like they like my friends if I actually you know were able to get out and meet so that rule of 15 is good one of the things I do is um like I think of people who are like really good friends of mine that I know a lot about that I have a lot of respect for who are like very much like me um, but they're never going to coach. So like my college roommate is one of those people and, you know, sounds horrible, but she's of a certain social status, you know, or, you know, so she is, would have friends like me. Um, and so like, I will go to her website and she like posts a picture of her kids. It gets like 300 likes, you know, like I'll just go through there and start friending some of those people. And like you said, like if we have, if it's just one friend in common, but I know that friend really well, like I will friend them. And if they say something, I'm like, Oh, she's my college roommate. And I just, you know, I adore her and I saw you our friends. And anyway, so, you know, I'm just kind of like, ah, through. um, but, um, that's one thing that I do. And that works really well for me because it connects me with a lot of people that are my target audience, you know, by finding somebody like, like me to do that with. 
Um, anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, let's talk connecting. I guess we'll all just like, so have you guys, are you doing that? Are you sending out your, are you friending people, adding people, following people, whatever you're doing right now? So let's, let's definitely do that. Like while we do this power hour. Um, so challenge you to like add, I mean, seriously, as a newer coach, like I probably could have added like 50 friends a day. Now, now Facebook will like flag you. If you add a bunch of friends um, that you don't have a lot of people in common with, they will flag you. So be careful of that. Uh, but you know, like I started with like 175 friends on Facebook. So obviously I had nowhere to go but up. Um, but I, so if you're a newer coach, definitely, I mean, like go add 20 friends. And when you look at them, you know, make sure that they're not friends of other coaches. That's another tip too. Like I try to stay away from that. Like if I see, like if I see somebody, a friend suggested to me and they're like friends with Jade and Tracy and you know, Christy, like I'm not going to add them because obviously they already have that established connection with a coach some way. Um, and so I really try to look for people that don't have anything in common, any friends in common with, uh, that are coaches. So, uh, that's like number one, let's all add like 10, 15, 20 friends. You can do it on Instagram. You can do it on Facebook. Uh, but just do that while I'm talking about connecting. Um, and then we'll just split up connecting. You guys can all share. Um, so I love, I, it's easy for me to say that connecting, this is my favorite part. Like it's, it's not it, as a new coach. I hated it. Like I felt creepy. I didn't know how to start a conversation. Yeah. Hey, Timmy. Okay. Um, I didn't know how to start a conversation. Um, like I just knew that if I messaged somebody, someone, they were going to be like, Oh, she wants to sell me something. Uh, you know? And so like, I really was shy about it, but the more that I kind of came to, to understand this whole process of inviting and building connections and relationships and, um, adding friends. And as I really came to believe in what I was doing, you know, and I found joy and, you know, the challenge groups that all just kind of made sense to me, like it became easier for me to start a conversation with that end goal in mind. If, does that make sense? Um, like I knew that, and the way I look at it is that, and I tell new coaches this a lot, like, cause it is scary. Uh, but the way that I look at it is that if I start a conversation with this person, like I'm going to connect with them over something that I genuinely connect with on their page, their profile, whatever. Um, it's going to be a genuine comment connection. I'm not going to make something up just to talk to somebody because that's just not me and I don't want to be that girl. Um, but you know, if I walk away from it with nothing else, then like I've made a new friend, you know, if they say no to me, then I'm going to, you know, I'm not, I mean, I am in it to connect with people and find challengers and coaches, but you know, that's not my sole motivation. Like I really want to genuinely connect with people and that just kind of is what I tell myself before I sit down and do those invites. So connecting for me, uh, you know, is that add these new friends? Like I don't add friends and then automatically message them. I don't do that. Um, I will put their name down in my Google streak or on my power hour sheet and I will wait a week or two and then I'll go back to it. So like when I write their name down, if it's on my power hour sheet, like I have the date marked on there, if it's in Google Streak, I'll write down when I added them as a friend. So like if I added Susie as a friend on July 14th, it's time for me to go back and to start like building that relationship. And what I'll do is I will start, I'll just go through her page and I'll, what is it, Timmy? Like, like comment. Is that kind of the rule? Like, like two post comment on one. And so I don't know. It's different for everybody. That's mine because I don't want to like blow her feet up, you know. But I will, I'll, you know, make it evident that I'm following her, you know. And I, if, I, if I comment, it's going to be a genuine comment. Uh, you know, your kid, that is so cute. Your kid playing in the water in that swimsuit, whatever, it's just adorable. Uh, your family photos are awesome. Who did your photos? Um, you know, that dress is so cute. Can you tell me where you got it? Uh, you know, just anything that I can genuinely connect with people over. And I still haven't messaged yet. Like I, I add them as a friend, I wait a week or two, then I go and I build that relationship on their page. Um, like a couple posts, comment on one. And so I move them. When I do that, I move them into my next Google streak. And I can show you guys how I do this in Google streak if you may want to see it. I've shared it before. Uh, but I move them into a different pipeline or I write it down on my, on my tracker that, you know, I'm like building that relationship. And then I wait another week or so. And then I send them a message, like a private message about something again that I connect with over uh, on their, their profile. It's not about beach body. It's not about fitness unless they ask me first. Um, and so like then I'm just building this relationship over things that are part of their life that I personally can connect with. And sometimes it's hard 
to find something to connect with somebody over. You know, like if they just post, like repost all day, like that's really hard. Um, the only one that I can, if, if it's a reposter and they're posting like scripture or encouraging messages or something, I can connect over that. Like I send this message all the time. I send the message that says, hey, you know, I just want to thank you for putting so, so much positivity out there in social media. There's so much negative stuff going on, but you're sharing, you know, uplifting quotes and scripture. And that's just so encouraging to me. And I just say, keep it up. And people love that. Like that's, that works. That starts conversations with me all the time. And so that's one of my favorites. But if I can't find anything to connect with, I don't connect. Or if I see this, like not really somebody that, that I would, you know, that's kind of part of my, part, part of my niche. Like I just unfriend them, honestly. I do um, because I kind of have to make space for new people. And so like I would just unfriend them. But it's not, I mean, I can typically find somebody to connect with. And so I'm connecting every single day. And I just take them through that funnel. You know, like I add them as a friend. I build a relationship by commenting and liking, and then eventually I send a Hey Girl message about something that is going on in their life. Um, and this could be like three or four weeks at least, you know, and I still have not invited them. And this is timely. I mean, this takes time. Like, it's not an instant, boom, Adam as a friend, they're my challenger for this challenge group. That's not the way I do it. Um, I take some time to build that relationship, and some people stay in those funnels for forever until I take them out, you know, like because I can't either connect with them or they don't respond or, you know, something. Uh, but it's, I do start a lot of conversations that way. And I feel like, you know, like it kind of builds up trust too, because once you start, once you add them as a friend, obviously they're going to look to see who you are. Right. Um, and then if you like and comment on a couple of their posts, then they're definitely going to go and see who you are and what you're about. And by the time you, Hey girl, message them, then they're already getting your posts in their newsfeed. So they have some idea about who you are, what you're about, and what you're doing, right? So it's not like, bam, hey, I don't know you, but will you buy some red in and fields for me? No, it's not that. It's, <laughs> it's, more, it's more gentle and more like, you know, relational. And so that is how, that's just my process for, for how I build relationships. Um, so connecting. And I, again, I just, I encourage you and I know this is hard and I get so many coaches who will send me a, a screenshot of somebody and they're like, how do I connect with this person? And I'm like, you can't just unfriend them and move on. But you know, like I, it just, I look for little things like literally like, um, you know, or, and, you know, another way that I do that is anybody that likes my post. Um, that is a, that is a automatic way to connect with somebody. Hey, Thanks so much for the love on my post. You know, I love encouraging other women or that was hard for me to put out there. I appreciate your support. Uh, you know, like if anybody likes your post, you can go back. Like, I mean, go back months ago, you know, and, you know, just look for people who have liked your post and send them a message and say thanks. Uh, you might think it sounds weird, but people like to get noticed. They like to get recognized. They like to, to start those conversations. And if they took the initiative to like your post, then obviously there was something that you did or said that, that they connected with already. So you've got that connection there. So don't be afraid to say, just say thank you for, for uh, liking that post, you know, and people will usually say, Oh, thank you so much. Of course you inspire me every single day. Or, you know, what you said just really spoke to me and boom, you've got that like way to roll with it. Okay. Um, and so those are two of the biggest ways that I connect with people and how I get those conversation started. Um, does anybody have questions or does anybody want to add to that? As, oh, go ahead, Timmy. Hey, I was just going to say real quick, um, like I was putting mine in streak sometimes and I'm really bad about updating that, like and going back and make sure that they did it. So one thing that I have been doing the last three months is kind of helping me is putting them as soon as they accept my friend request, putting them in a separate list on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then I can click on that list like once or twice a day and I scroll through and I like and comment because those are all my new people. And so then like Rachel said, you're commenting and liking their posts, but it's like all narrowed down. Like I have, this is May, June and July. And so then I know the next month, that's when I want to start like connecting with them, like on a personal message. So like the first month I kind of just like, and excuse me, I'm sorry, like and comment on their posts. The second month is when I start going in and sending them individual messages because they've seen me like and posted stuff for the previous month. Mm 
Um, and then like the month after that, if I haven't already brought it up in conversations, I'll send them um, an invitation to one of my events. So that's kind of how I got to progress it. Do y'all know how to do Facebook lists? Do you want me to share my screen just real quick? Okay. Can y'all see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like what happens is down here on the side, can you see it says friends list? You click on that, you can see I've created these lists. And so like I have people that I have always asked, but they don't and they're not ready. So I have them as my show love. I have my dream coaches that I think would be great coaches, but they just haven't committed to it. But that's just like little side things that I like. But then lately I've been doing it for people like my new friends in May, June and July. And so all these people are who I friended and stuff and I put them in there and they don't know they're in that group. It's just a different thing. So I can just kind of scroll through it. So let me show you real quick what I'll do. I'll go to, like I've, I've already friended them. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my friends and I'm gonna look to see, go to my recently added. And so these are the different people that I've already added and I can see like this girl I just friended tonight and she accepted. So when I click on friends, and do you see where it says add to another list right there? Okay, click on that. Um, I'm going to put her in my July because today's the last day in July. But if I didn't want to do that, if you scroll down, it says add new list. And I can type in August of 2017. And I can put her in there. So now when I go to my list, my friends list, She's technically going to be the only one in there because I just made that list. But so now I can go in once a day and just see everyone that I've you know been kind of talking to and I can quickly like and post because those are all the new people. So I can make sure I'm finding all their stuff. I like that. Yes. That's so like, cause you don't have to think and I've stopped tracking sending friend requests because they may never accept it and that's just one more name that I'm carrying around it's like baggage and so I'm not going to worry about it what are you going to do um, if they don't ever do it so then okay when they do accept it I think that's great that's a great way to do it because it's like how do you um, remember them that's so easy to have it on Facebook there um, I'm a reformed non-connector, so I <laughs> hated connecting and recently shared that. And it, I, it took me a while to figure that out because I just want to get from point A to B in the conversation, and that's how I've had to work for so long. But um, I started thinking about this like we did in fundraising, and I shared this last week. I think, was that last week? That's been the longest week ever, I feel like, um, in some ways. but. In fundraising, if you're going to ask somebody for $20, you can ask them like a cold call. If you're going to ask somebody for $25,000, you're going to cultivate that donor for up to six months. Because if you ask them too soon, you have not given them time to build that trust in that relationship. And so it's also another way I think about it. It's like, you know, the Google streak and you've got these different phases. That's essentially a pipeline and what people in the world of like corporate sales will call a pipeline. They're building that pipeline and they're looking at when they think that this, they've cultivated this relationship enough and they can make the big sale. And I know that our sales aren't huge, but we're asking somebody to trust us with a hundred and, $99, $160 of their hard earned money to prioritize for their health and Shakeology as a bulk of that. So it is a big, you know, chunk of money um, for some people. And so um, that's one way that I have started looking at it. And if you can ever get to that point of building up your 
cultivation, those cultivating those relationships and connecting, your inviting is going to be so much easier. You're not going to have to cold invite as much, you know, because when I wasn't connecting, everybody's like, invite three to five times a day. I'm like, uh, who, how, you know, it's like cold invites. And I mean, I still do some of those. Um, and I turn my connections into invites pretty quickly unless it's someone that I've not talked with in six to seven years, you know, unless they bring it up. If they bring it up, it's fair game. Um, but um, I, I, you know, it is like, think about it as in cultivating the relationship and building the trust. And so when you do that, like Rachel said, you know, I know in the beginning, it's like you don't have two months to hit success club. I mean, maybe you do, but you don't feel like it, you know, to get your free ticket to summit, that sort of thing. So you do have to kind of like start off pretty fast. And a lot of people typically are asking you what you're doing. So that's easier. But um, just connect with people, you know, and genuinely, like Rachel said, you know, ask somebody how old their kids were. I could have done the math. I could have sat down, thought like, okay, what year was it their kid was born and all this, but why not just start a conversation and ask her? She didn't reply for three or four days maybe. And now the blue today, I got a message. It was like, they're going to be 12 next month. I was like, what is she talking about? I had forgotten what I asked her, you know? And so I had to go in and read. I was like, oh yeah, that's crazy, you know? And so... But I mean, I admit it, like, how old are they? But I forgot. <laughs> so um, it's just conversation. Like, as bad as I wanted to be like, hey, girl, I'll count you as one of my invites today. You want to do this group with me? I didn't even bring it up. I know she's watching, um, but I didn't even bring it up. So think about it as a long process. But also know, this is another thing that, again, and we'll go into it, inviting. Do not... Don't draw it, don't drag it out more than it needs to. Turn it to an invite. You've got to look for that opportunity, that door, that window to open. That's good, good advice. Are y'all are y'all connecting? Are y'all hey girling, liking, commenting? Yay! Good. Um, do anybody want to add to what where are we at? Connecting? Sorry, I'm a little lost. I like it's like it's like like y'all are sitting in front of me. Like I like this. Um all right. Do y'all have any questions about that? Like, is that something that anybody struggles with? I did struggle with that as a new coach. Like I went, you know, like for a while, I'll be honest, like I got a lot of comments and messages from my post, which is a good point. You know, we're not really covering posting tonight, but you've got to be posting consistently, you know, and you know, you can't, I just, you got to be posting you. I hope, I hope you guys watch that dream team call tonight. If you didn't, it was really good. She gave some really good tips. Um, especially like if you have new coaches who are kind of, you see them posting the same picture every single day and saying the same thing every single day, like get them to watch that video and I'll share it in our team page, but you've got to be posting, you got to be sharing your story because that, you know, people are going to connect over, you know, um, I'm tired and my kids spit up all over me all night or peed the bed and I had to get up and I'm tired cause I had to do that and it kicked me all night. They're going to connect with that way more than like, Oh, I just did chip shop, you know, again today, you know, people, people want to hear your story and, and see you in your face. And so that's something that we've got to be getting our coaches to, to understand and to do. Um, and, uh, anyway, so posting is super, super duper important because as you start connecting, as you start building that relationship and liking and messaging, they're going to automatically see your posts more. So if you're doing all that work, connecting and building relationships, but you're not posting, then you have nothing like you still have nothing. Um, so that posting is a super, super huge, you know, cornerstone of what we do as coaches. Um, so now we're, uh, so are you guys good? Like, have you got your, like, you've done some connecting while we're talking and stuff? Um, cause that's what we're, we're trying to help you guys do your, like actually do your power hour while we talk. I told them I already did mine cause I was so tired and I couldn't think, but <laughs> I, I had to do that early. Um, Timmy, are you tackling inviting? Are you the one to inviting? Okay. Okay, so like I almost didn't even like want to tackle this one at all, but because uh, Rachel knows this is like my this is the thing that stopped me like from wanting to do coaching and stuff like that. I was like I was scared to death of going ahead and doing that extra invite. Like I could connect all day. Hey, how are you? We'll talk for hours and days, and I never would go. Whoop, 
and do the invite. And so then I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And I'll share like, you know, I finally got to the point in my life where, um, you know, I, I love doing this and I love connecting, but it takes time away from my family and it takes time away with like my sleep or something, you know, cause I will do stuff early in the morning and early at night. I finally got to the point where like, if I'm not going to invite, then I need to just stop doing this because I'm wasting people's time. I'm wasting my time. I could be doing other things. I could be sleeping. And so I finally just kind of like flip that switch and just like, Hey, Hey, if they say no, they say no. And here's the main thing about it. I stopped trying to make my invite a book. I stopped making it so long because it felt like I was putting everything into it. And when they said no, it crushed me. So when I simplified my my, you know, hey, do you, you know, invitation, quote unquote, it wasn't quite so um, heartbreaking to me because it's more casual. So I, of course, I'm a slide girl, so I had to like make a slide to keep me on track, but I don't have to share because you're listening and doing your stuff. So to keep me on track. So like I've shared before, like the whole idea, like you got to think of it as like a party, you know, and just talk about how it is something you're excited about, but you have to send out those invitations. If you don't actually send an invitation, everyone just thinks, great. She's, I mean, I'm building a pool in my backyard and I get messages all day long. Who's building your pool? Da, 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 da. But I tell you what, I don't want people just showing up in my house and thinking they're going to come swim in my pool. I'm going to invite you to come swim at my pool for the people that I want. I have people tell me they're going to drop their kids off, but yeah, I really don't want that. So my whole point is, is I want to invite the people to my party. So that's like how I got into that whole idea of it's more like you're inviting people to the party. You're inviting someone to a barbecue. And if they can't make it, you're not crushed and devastated, but if they can make it, you're excited that they come. So I'm a girl that works from a list. And so I talked to you already. I shared my little like connecting list. Like I have that list um, of people that I just friended last month. But then I also have a list um, and you can download your friends list. To some people, this scares them. They don't want to see their friends list on Facebook. But I technically forget who I'm friends with. I mean, not, not that I have thousands of friends, but I have 1,800 friends. I seriously can't remember everybody. So there's a quick way. You can download a list of friends. And I like to go through it because I like to see, oh my gosh, I've been friends with them. And it does it like in order of how long you've been friends with them. Like, how have I not invited them to a challenge group? We've been friends since, you know, junior high or something. So I like looking at that list and saying, I've totally got to reconnect with that person. And that kind of helps jog my memory. So I have my new people that I've been, you know, I'm starting to comment and connect with. I have my older people that I see, like, I have so got to catch up with that person and I'm connecting with them. And so mainly what I'm going to show you is how I switch it from connecting to doing that little invite. So I have those lists that I use, and then I decide I start doing the Hey Girl thing. Obviously a great one is about pictures. Um, one is about kids. If you have dogs, I'm gonna ask you about what breed your dog is, and so I'm connecting. So I'm looking for somewhere to connect with you to make the change, okay? And so like my, my invites are not major anymore. These like, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and it was just so much information, it kind of just, like, froze them. So, friends that I've been friends with for a long time on Facebook, and I know I've seen my posts, are simple as, hey, Sarah, have you ever thought you'd benefit from one of my faith and fitness groups? I'm organizing my next group, and I felt led to invite you. So, I've gotten more out of those, like, okay, girl, tell me more. Yeah, I've thought about it, but not really, or not really, you know, it's not for me. Because I have, you know, because you are talking about it, you're sharing about it. So I guess I just feel like it's throwing it out there. I kind of feel like I'm in a coffee shop with Rachel, having coffee with her, and then we go get up to leave and go our separate ways. And I forgot to tell her, like, hey, we're having a barbecue tomorrow. Do you guys want to come? And she's like, oh, we already have plans, but thanks for the invite. Okay. I guess I, I've changed it to knowing it that I'm just doing it more casual and it's not that big of a deal. So, and if it's a newer conversation, I do explain a little bit more because I they may not know. So this is one of the people that I put in my, my July list or my new people list. So I'll say something about, Hey, you, this is a little, this may be a little random, but I share a lot about my health and my journey on social media. I do it to help keep me accountable, but I also do it to help other people stay um, accountable to their goals. I'm working on my next faith and fitness group. Would you, do you have any health goals you're working on? Type of that. Oh, I felt led to, same thing. I felt led to invite you this month and I'd love for you to join us. Do you have any health goals that you're working towards? So I'm not asking them, are you looking to lose weight? I'm not asking them to be a coach. I'm not blowing everything up. 
telling them everything that entails. I'm just asking them if they have any, uh, if they would benefit and if they have any health goals. Because most of us all have health goals. Even if you are at your weight to the perfect way, you still may have a health goal here and there. You're going to wish something. No one ever, no one ever thinks they're perfect. And so you just might want to be healthier, lower your cholesterol, things you can't even see. So that's where I use those wordings of, do you have any health benefits? So just some invites today that I just grabbed um, and I could share, but I'll just talk about it. Like we were talking this and that, how old your kids? And she told me, and I'm about to have stepkids. And she told me their ages of their stepkids. And so I said, oh, does that mean there's a wedding in sight? And so she said, there is in March, she gave me the date. And so I said, hey, I don't know if you would be interested, but you know, I have a faith and fitness group. Would you be interested? interested in joining a faith and fitness group before your wedding. You know, I just turned it into like something that she may want to do and just casually invited her like while we we're chatting, I work on, and I sent that whole thing. I share about my health and wellness journey to help keep other people accountable. Do you think you might be interested in it? Um, and so that was just today. I grabbed some of the ones that I use today. Um, I send out happy birthday messages to everybody because it just counts as one of my connects. So anytime you see on that list, I send everybody healthy, a happy birthday message. I ask them if they plan to celebrate, how do they plan to celebrate? And I just try to, you know, somehow spark that message. So the last one we were talking about, she happens to be a teacher. She taught third grade. I was like, oh, I used to teach third grade too. We kind of talked about um, a few other things. And then and I, this was just like, a, I just felt like a connection with her because she had kids and, you know, the different things. And so I just said, this may be a little random, but I share a lot about my health and wellness journey. You know, would you like to learn about my next upcoming faith and fitness group? And she said, awesome. I'm trying to set some goals. So now we're in the conversation and we're just walking our way through, like answering questions. What are her goals and things like that? Um, another one for today, um, I was talking to her. It was a happy birthday message. So we're continuing. She told me she had a great day. She bought a new book. I asked her what book she was reading and she shared some of her favorite authors that all ended up being Christian authors. And so that was like my lead. It's faith and fitness. And I was like, Hey, if you're, uh, I noticed all your books that you talked about were, um, were Christian authors. And so we made that, you know, connection. I was like, you would totally love one of my faith and fitness group, uh, groups. Are you working towards any health goals? That's it. And so I sent that today. So some of them are just kind of, you find that one connection and you flip flop it into one of your, your invitations. And sometimes like the one where we're talking already about her goals, it was just like, okay, we've been chatting for a while. And so, Hey, do you have any interest in this? And you just got to make it really casual. Um, I feel that the less um, longer ones tend to put too much pressure on them and tend to get them a little bit nervous. So the short and the sweet seems to work well with me. So that's all I got. That was helpful. Good. And I'll say like for me, um, an invite, uh, I am not currently like hitting it hard for my challenge group because it doesn't start until the 21st, uh, but I am inviting to my free group. Okay, so like I'm inviting like Mad to my free group, and I am using my event page to do that mostly. Uh, my event that I created for that, or a post, you know, like that transformation post I did last night, like the seven days of clean eating, and this is what my stomach is like. Uh, you know, like I got like five woohoo applications from that last night just for my free group, and so um, that is. Um, that's what I'm inviting to you because obviously my goal is to convert. You know, if I converted three of those people to a challenge group, then that's boom, success club right there. Um, so that is what I'm inviting to. So don't think that it just has to be like a challenge group. If you're doing anything to grow your market, to invest in people, to build those relationships, and it can be a coaching invite too. You know, some days my invites are just coaching invites. Um, and so that, uh, but a free group is something I'm doing this week. And then I'll hit it hard like next weekend after that started, uh, inviting to my challenge group. And I just, you know, like you guys all know how we use the event. I, you know, I, after I've done all the, the relationship building and the connecting and stuff, like I'll use the event kind of always say as a buffer. So I'll send them an invite to the event and then I send them a message and just say, Hey, I was thinking about you. I was putting together this next challenge group of mine and, you know, just praying about or thinking about who I wanted to invite and your name came to mind. Um, if you'd be interested in learning more about it, I sent you an invite. You can go read about it. Or just let me know and I can help you get started. Do you have any goals for your health? 
Um, and that's just, that's a message I always send when I send an invite to the event. And don't ever invite anybody without sending them a message. That's really important for me too. Like I, you know, I know that when we first had those events, Melanie was like, go invite everybody in your friends list. And I'm like, well, first of all, you can only invite like 475 people at a time. And secondly, I'm not going to invite that many people because like that's so impersonal. And I hate it when people do that to me. So like I will, I'll invite like five, 10 people a day and I'll just send them the message. You know, I was thinking about you, I invited you to this event. Yada, yada, do you have any goals for your health? You know, some people never respond. Some people are like, yes. Some people are like, okay, I'll check it out. You know, I get all different kinds of messages. Right. I, I second what Timmy was saying because that is really a couple of months ago when my um, inviting and conversations kind of flipped. Um, I just stopped like making it a big deal, like Timmy said, and it was very conversational. I watched a video with uh, Christina Delgado, and it really was about inviting um, like working coaches, but she talked in that video also about, um, I just thought about it like from a challenger standpoint also. And then there was another video I listened to Katie Ersta about Sean week. And that's what really got me jazzed up for Sean week and kind of turned it. I didn't really ask people if they wanted to be in Sean week. I told them they were going to love it and that they should do it. And that really changed how my confidence and I'm like, why wouldn't they love it? Like it's going to be awesome. It really is. You know, I've not got anything prepared for it yet, but I'm going to, you know, so that's what I was thinking. And so I just told people it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. It's the first time he's done anything. And so my success partner and I today were chatting and I was like, you know how pumped we were about Sean week. I want to be that pumped about my free group that starts Friday, but I'm not. And so why not? So I went back to my Sean week event post when I was promoting it and just change the words to promote my current free group. And we're going to do the Sean week workout because it's great. And, um, it's seven days and it makes them feel a part of something. So anyways, um, I did, I started just asking people or not asking people, but, uh, tell them, I think they would love my group. And I also like Timmy said that, question is a game changer of are you currently working on any fitness or nutrition goals do you currently have any goals you know what are you, are you working on anything right now I mean if they say no you know like she said okay well great and it comes back to nutrition you know if I counted probably seven or eight times out of ten it comes back to nutrition and that is like that's what makes us unique is we're the whole package you know so that just tacking that question on the end and then your excitement, you know, it's not bossy, like do it, do it. <laughs> it's not like that, but it's just the excitement and don't, for the longest, something happened when I started coaching, I was so excited about it. And I guess I just was told no too many times, but something I was just like, you know, let me know if you want to do it. <laughs> who wants to do that? Like I wouldn't have joined Rachel. If she was like, yeah, it's going to be good. Let me know if it's something you want to do. She was like, boom, here's the link. We're going, you know? So she didn't give me the link right away, but it was close. It was, it was, it was fast. I mean, I told her I wanted in and she's boom. So, um, you know, excitement in that question and it is not going to be the last me message you send to them and they're probably going to not commit to your current challenge group like that's probably how it's going to be but you've started that conversation with them about a challenge group and they'll come back do you have any questions any questions about inviting or do you need like help with like oh, there's this person i want to invite but i don't know how to do it um do you guys have any questions about that we, we had a help. <clears throat> All right. Um, I guess we'll also, I get you guys, are you sending invites? Um, just send two or three invites to whatever you've got coming up next. A free group, a be challenge group. If you're inviting to mine, mine starts August 21st. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just send out some invites. Um, and like I said, I shared with my, you guys, my free group link today. Like if you, 
if you need like a script or something to run your own free group, like it's not too late to throw a post out tonight and say, Hey, you know, like I'm running a seven day back to school challenge. You know, this is something, you know, clean eating changed my life. And I want to encourage some other women, other moms who think they're too busy to do it. Uh, you know, we're going to give you a meal plan, a grocery list, prep guide. You know, people love that stuff. They will, they will claw their way to your free group for a free meal, meal plan and grocery list, honestly, guys. So, um, and then, you know, we can just give you some posts and stuff to put in there if you don't know what to post. But yeah, it can be a free group. It can be a um, challenge group. Does not matter. Just we're always inviting to something. Um, so, Christy, do you have follow-ups? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I'm on you. Okay. So my first thing about follow-ups is that you have to connect and invite to follow up. <laughs> so you can't be following up if you're not inviting. And if you're following up to cold invites and that's the only time they're hearing from you, that's not cool. You know, and there are some times where I want people to be in my challenge group so badly because they're so close or I know they need it. And I'm like, don't do it. It's in their court you know, let them show you a sign. But, um, so follow-ups, set the stage, like in the connecting and the inviting and they say no, set the stage for your follow-up right then. If they tell you no, say, okay, well girl, I'm always doing a group. My goal is to do at least one group a month. And so when I get my date set for next month, I'll let you know, okay? If they say, if they never reply back, I'm still going to let them know, <laughs> like if they're hot on my radar. Um, and then I've never had anybody say, I don't want to jinx this, but I've never had anybody say, no, please don't ask me again. <laughs> like <laughs> if they did, I'd be like, mm, probably going to unfriend you. <laughs> but um, I mean, because come on, like I'm asking them to do something that they have it likely shown some form of interest in. Um, so my follow-ups, um, I try to not let it, like I said, be the only time I follow up with them again, like month to month. Um, I try to have conversations with them, engage, especially on their post throughout the month. Um, and comment quick things, you know, just, it doesn't have to be like anything terrible. So it's almost, you know, like that cycle, you're going to go back into that cycle of, um, engaging on their post, connecting with them in some way to get back to that follow-up invite. That's my recommendation. Now, there are some people that are absolutely 100% like, no, I'm going on vacation this month. It's not right for me, but I'm in your group next month. Okay, that's great. I'll like their post if it shows up, and but I've got it noted. Misty said in July, she's going to be in my group. So I never, ever, ever though count that as like gospel, you know, like that's not a, a that's not a commitment until she is actually in my challenge group. Um, because guess what? This month Misty got pregnant and she is very sick. And so she cannot be in my challenge group. So it didn't work out. But I, so I never like felt like she was a shoe in, but I was pumped about it because we've been connecting probably since. February. So anyways, all that to say is you, it, you have to do the things before follow up to follow up. And if you're not following up, then what about your credibility? You know, you ask them, is it like a one hit wonder? You know, some people are wanting you to follow up. I, I actually had one of my longtime challengers and discount coach, like she does not have a desire to coach. Um, but she's been in my challenge group since the first one she started. I mean, one of my first ones, actually. Her reply to my follow-up was, believe it or not, or something, it was crazy. She was like, I have wanted you to follow up with me. So I would say yes. Like, she was honest. Like, she wanted that and needed it. And so, you know, there's that piece of it. And then there's, like, the busy part of not following through, right? People get busy. It's not like 
coaching is not their hobby or their business. So they're not like thinking, waking up in the morning, thinking they got to get that challenge pack. Um, so just follow up with people because they may have forgotten. So I've talked about like the no follow up, but there's also the follow up between the invite and like calling it, you know, putting it on pause for the month. So that's probably where I should have started. Um, I don't just send somebody in it or ask someone to be in the challenge group, send them a link and let it die. You know, I will watch my coach online office for that to come through. And if they tell me they're going to do it tomorrow, I'm looking for it. And um, if it doesn't happen, unless it's the 30th or the 31st, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, I'm not going to send them a message tomorrow night and say, Hey, I haven't seen your challenge pack order yet. Did you get it? Then I'll do it like a day or two later. And also this depends on where we are in the month and how close we are to the challenge group. Um, so just, you know, it's, there's not a cookie cutter way to follow up to get someone to commit. Um, but the, the number one thing across the board is you don't want to harass anybody. Um, and you can't keep going back to the same well if it's dry. So those are my, my biggest tips for follow up and you've got to track to be able to follow up. So there's a lot you have to do to, to get to the follow up, but most of my commitments for each month come from follow-ups from invitations and connections months prior. So it's rare. I mean, rare that I send someone an invitation to a challenge group and they're like, yeah, I'm in and they're in. So you got to think about that. Um, it, it pays off. And it's like what Melanie says, like pumping the well, you know, like you pump it in many ways, but eventually if they're going to commit, you know, they're going to commit, they're watching you. And you know, those people that really start engaging with you and watching like, okay, I think that they're they really want to do this. So I'm going to follow up with them first. So it's really, to me, follow up is like a gut instinct in a way, but there is a strategy to it as well. Um, so that's kind of my, my top things about follow up. I think that's good. Um, I think it is very much a gut instinct because I'll tell you, like I've messaged somebody like a year later and was like, you know what? Your name just came to my, came to my heart and I know you were really ready to do this a while back and we haven't talked since then, but you know, if you're ready at any time, I've got a challenge group for you to jump into. And like I've had somebody say, you know what? Thank you for not hounding me about this. I followed you this whole year. Um, you know, and I just wasn't ready, but now I'm actually ready. Okay, let's do it. I mean, it's very much a gut thing and a prayer thing. I mean, like it's definitely, I don't say that like flippantly, like definitely pray over who God wants you to connect with and like over your challenge group and who he wants in that challenge group. Um, mm -hmm. sometimes I wonder cause they like out pretty early, but <laughs> it's like, how'd you get here? Um, I will say I have a couple of times more than a couple some people that are like so close to connecting uh, to committing or they back out last minute, something happens. I don't know. Um, and I genuinely, like Rachel said, believe that they like a challenge group and this person, like they're meant for each other. Like I have told them, I am not going to give up on you being in one of my challenge groups because I know that you are going to love it. I would love to reconnect with you and spend time with you in this group. I do that a lot with my Memphis friends or sorority sisters. Um, you know, it would be such an awesome way to hang out. Um, I'm not giving up on you, you know, and I've had people say, okay, thank you. I'm glad you didn't give up on me. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just recently, like one of my most successful challengers right now, told me thank you for not giving up on me for since I started coaching we talked about it on and off and she just committed during Sean week so um just be honest with people like you know like Rachel said you're on my heart or I'm not going to give up on you I'm not going to hound you but I'm not going to give up on you kind of thing you might want to add to that Timmy or Jade or anybody do y'all have anything to add to that how you follow up I mean, I do, I go by gut instinct too a lot. I don't want to hound someone because I know that 
there's tons of people out there hounding them already about buying something. And I'd, I'd try to make it genuine. Timmy, did you? you know? I was just going to just reconfirm because I think a lot of people have misconceptions that like you send out the invite, all of a sudden you're answering questions and there's no objections and you're so, and you all of a sudden have a challenge pack and a challenger. So I just wanted to just to say, you know, Chrissy's not alone. Majority of all of it is the follow-ups. Um, and I know me personally, like we did not call back a few people from our pool um, because they did not even bother to follow up with us. They sent us the pricing of the pool and that's a lot of money to invest. I wanted someone to like kind of court me a little bit on that and so and prove that they were going to be there for me and so there was two people that we just they just never even they were just they sent me an email they never even called to say hey I wanted to make sure you got that email there is a little bit to say about customer service and taking care of letting you know that you're not just buying something and then you're not going to hear back from them again so that was my two cents mm -hmm. and I think I think maybe it was Christy that said this earlier um like now, I mean, now, now, not early, not as a new coach. Like I didn't have this confidence or boldness, but I could have faked it more. Uh, but like, I am really just direct, like, okay, let's do it. It's time. You ready to sign up? You know, like I will be really, really like, you're, you're my next girl. We're doing it. So let's get you signed up. You know, like I don't even really ask the question. I just, you know, like, and again, that's a gut thing. Like if they talked about it forever, but they haven't pulled the trigger, then I'm like, okay, I either have to be like, really like, okay, you are doing it now and you're going to rock it or, you know, like I just let them go. You know, if I followed with some up with somebody like nine times and they're like wishy-washy, like they fill out my woofing form every month, I'm kind of like, <sighs> you know, <laughs> and that's, you know, I just, it's a gut thing. But if I know they want to do it, but they've had this roadblock or obstacle or just, you know, fear is a huge thing for people. I mean, think about when you started, um, I mean, I tell it in my story all the time. I just knew I was going to fail again, you know, like I was going to start this diet or these shakes and it was just going to like work for a month. And then I was just going to go, you know, AWOL and just eat all the birthday cake and fail again, you know? And so like fear is a huge, huge, uh, draw. I mean, a roadblock for people that you're talking to. So when I say be bold, that's, that's important, but also like be mindful of that and and I guess respectful of that that level of fear and think about how you felt too but some people need that push over the edge you know so when you follow up you just like, all right let's do it let's do it you're my last person for this challenge group and I'm signing you up tonight you know something that I started this I probably should have said this at inviting when I was so afraid and connecting and everything two things before summit I realized if I'm not asking them, someone else is. Mm -hmm. Someone else is going to ask them for something. It hit me. It was with plexus. That's what got me. Somebody got somebody with plexus <laughs> and I didn't. And I was like, oh, how was I so naive to think I was the only person asking this girl if she wanted to do something. And I didn't, I wasn't really confident in it. I was just kind of still me, me, me. And so um, in my invites to her. And so here, next thing I know, she's like, got her pink drink, you know, and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, that's okay. It all works out for a reason. <laughs> but the other thing is someone said at summit, I don't know who it was. It was a pretty bold statement. If you're not inviting, like this is your hobby. And she was right for the longest coaching was my hobby. And I owned that. That's really where it was. So I didn't have that drive to like, you know, grow a team. And it wasn't, I mean, I did and I didn't. And that's okay if that's where you are. Know that. Know like do your own thing. But if you're really wanting to push, you're going to have to invite. So find your way to get over that and for your follow-ups. And so that really resonated with me. Yeah. Um, all right. Do we have any questions about any of that follow-ups? Follow-ups are where it's at. I mean, it's all where it's at, but like, um, I wouldn't have success with points ever if I didn't follow up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really important. Um, and so I'm going to close this out with closing with class. Uh, this is where I think that most coaches, even me today, like I still get like sweaty armpits. <laughs> I have to talk about the price and sign it up sometimes, you know, uh, but closing, you got to close it. You got to explain that they need a challenge pack 
that they have to spend. They have to part with $140, $160, whatever it is, and uh, to join your group, okay? And so, like, this is where when you follow up or get to that commitment stage, people are like, oh, I thought this was free. If they think it was free, then you haven't done your job right. You need to, like, work on your conversations. Honestly, that's kind of bold, but I mean, that's just what it is. Like if, if you're posting and you're talking about your challengers and sharing success or, or sharing what you're doing in these challenge groups, talking about Shakeology from time to time, like people know what you're about. And um, if you've explained the challenge group with that challenge group description, if you, I mean, like obviously initially if somebody thinks it's free, I'm not saying you're not doing your job, but if you've talked to this person for like weeks and then you get to the closing part and they don't know that there's like a commitment level, then you need to like, we need to work on your conversation. Okay. Um, but by the time that I started the conversation, asked them a bunch of questions, explained what the challenge group part is. Um, then they're like, that's great. Okay. What do I need to do? Um, this is where a lot of coaches kind of flake out and like, ah, I don't know how to ask for the sale. And Timmy explains it really well. Love the way she does that, you know, about inviting them to the party and you're talking about how great it is and all this stuff. But you would explain all this awesome stuff and then be like, just back off because you've got to ask for a sale. You have to want, like for me personally, I have to sit down and think, oh my gosh, like why look around? How is my life different? Because I parted with 140 I don't remember how much it was then, $160 to join my challenge group. And I basically got food and a workout program, right? Um, and so, like, I have to really keep that in mind. And I have to remind myself what Shakeology has done for me, what it's done for so many of my challengers. And so, I have this boldness and this confidence when it comes to talking about the challenge group. Um, and so, like, whenever somebody says, you know, hey, yes, I'm ready to commit. What do I need to do? Um, I close it out with, okay, awesome. We just need your challenge pack to get you started. They already know what Shakeology is because I've talked about it in my challenge group description, right? It's a meal replacement. So I re-emphasize that. You need your challenge pack. That includes uh, your workout program or your year membership to all access um, Beachbody On Demand, all the workouts, you know, that Beachbody's ever created. I will help you choose one to start with. And then as you progress, I'll help you choose another. As you get stronger and you tackle one, I'll help you choose another, you know, and I'm really placing an emphasis on that long-term health, right? And I explained that they get the portion containers as well as a 30 day supply of Shakeology. Again, that's a meal replacement. You're buying 30 meals all at once. Uh, when you get this challenge pack, the challenge pack is $160. I just need your email address and to know which flavor of Shakeology you want to start with. I don't even ask. I don't say it's $160. Is that okay? No, I say it's $160. I've explained all that. Um, I need your email address and to know which flavor of Shakeology you want to start with. So again, like Christy said, I just assume they're going to do it. You know, I talk to them like they're going to do it. Um, and you know, $160 for 30 meals. I mean, like I can pay $160 on three family meals, you know, in two weeks. So, you know, it's, it's, it, once you explain the value and what it is, a lot of people don't, I mean, if they don't have the money, then yes. Like I understand that if they don't have the money today to buy a challenge pack. That's, I mean, I don't think I had the money. Like when Melanie first told me about it, honestly. Um, but you know, once you've explained it and I, you know, if I have a price objection, I don't just like walk away. I don't say, okay, well, when you get the money, come back. You know, what I do is I explain, I really, I connect. So this is the classy part to me. Whatever kind of objection you get, like I always connect with it. I don't care if it's a time objection. I don't care if it's a money objection. Um, I don't care what it is, but like, uh, I don't drink, I don't drink my shakes objection or drink my meals objections. I always connect and like, uh, validate that objection, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I totally understand. It's that feel felt found. Totally understand how you feel. Like I did not, I was not about to drop $130 on some shake, a bag of powder. Whenever I first started, I thought it was insane. I actually didn't. It took me three whole months to decide to invest in Shakeology. And that's the truth. So I connect, I, you know, validate their concern or their objection. And then I say, but what I found was that, you know, I saw all these other people having success with it and their health was improving. Um, you know, they were having more energy and I just decided I needed to try it and it's a meal replacement. So I quickly figured out that I was, you know, spending eight bucks every morning on like gas station food for breakfast. And, you know, the shake cost me $4 a day. And now Matt and I, we both drink it. We just budget it into our weekly grocery budget. Okay. That's exactly what I see. And people are, I was like, Oh yeah, well that, that makes sense, you know? And so they may decide to buy it then, but if they don't, 
they end up buying it later because I've, mean, you know, I've broken it down. I've, you know, said, okay, I, I understand your concerns, your objections. I felt the same way, but what I found was this. Okay. And so, um, usually that, if people really want to do it, usually that kind of explaining about the meal replacement part of it and, and you know, that they're going to actually not like add something to their diet, but it's something that they're already eating that works. Um, if they decide not to, I don't just say, okay, well, next time I have a challenge group, you're welcome to join. I say, okay, I totally understand. But in the meantime, like until you can join my challenge group, because they know I'm not going to let them in without Shakeology. And if they ask about that, I say, well, I understand, you know, like I really want to help you, but my challenge groups are exclusively for my customers who are doing a workout program and drinking Shakeology because honestly, I have just found that my challengers have greater results when they incorporate Shakeology. And my job as a coach is to help my challengers get the best results possible. Uh, but if you can't do it now, you know, you want to do it in the future, what can we do right now to get you started? Can I share a meal plan with you? Can I, um, can I help you give you some tips? Can I, um, can you can try the, you know, the free beach body on demand trial and try some workouts or if they say, well, I just need to know where to get started and they're not doing anything. I'll say, okay, we'll just start walking a block every day and then walk two blocks, you know, the next day or, you know, I offer them something. That's why I don't want anybody to think that I, if, if you don't buy a challenge pack for me, then I'm not your coach and I'm not going to help you do anything um, because that's not what I'm about. And so that too is also where a free group comes in handy from time to time. I don't run a free group every month, but when I do, by golly, you better believe I'm going to invite that person to my next free group. Okay. Um, and so I'm always like somebody said earlier, like I'm going back and I'm connecting with those people. I'm staying connected with those people and I am checking in on them. I am not always saying, Hey, do you want to join this much challenge group? I'm like, Hey, did you ever get started? Were you able to, to, to make some changes in your health? How's your family? You know, just something. I stay connected with those people. Um, and you know, honestly, nine times out of 10, they end up becoming a challenger later because I built that relationship from the beginning. I have not spammed them. I've not cold called them or cold invited them, but I have invested in them and they know where my heart is at. And, and typically when they get the, with, get the funds, they usually come around unless somebody gets them with Lexus in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it just, it's, it's really, it's just, I mean, if I could just stress anything, it is a little time consuming, but it's all about the relationship. It's all about being genuine and honest and truly wanting to help people. And when, when we do that, like you, people sense that. And, you know, I can't tell you how many referrals I get, um, even from people who don't join a challenge group. Like, you know, they're like, oh, you need to ask Rachel about her next challenge group. Or, um, you know, just people in my challenge groups are sending me people all the time because, like, it's not just a uh, make a sale you know, get some points on the board and that's it. I, you know, I tell people all the time, like when I become your coach, that's when my job really begins and I'm going to ride you until you tell me to go away. <laughs> and you know, that is that not ride them, but you know what I mean? Um, that that's, it's just, it's just all about the relationship part of it. And, and sometimes, I mean, it took me a while to get there. Like fear was a huge thing that held me back in the beginning. My challenge group sucked. Cause I didn't think that I was like, a, I didn't think I was a good coach. I didn't think I could, I could really encourage people. I didn't have that, what Melanie had or whatever. Um, but when I got over that and started to make it my own and turn myself into it, you know, that's when, um, my challengers started to get results and, uh, I started to get coaches from my challenge groups and, you know, they started to give me referrals and things like that. So it's all about the relationship, like 100%. Anybody want to add to that? You may have questions. It's late. No, oh, I start work tomorrow. <laughs> oh no. Um, but anyways, Hannah, props to you for coming home and eating your dinner and bathing your baby. You're like a rock star. Sorry. No, I love it. Earlier, but it was a really rough night at work, and I didn't get off till like nine forty-five. Maybe we're gonna work you out of that job. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, all right. Um, yeah, Hannah uh, just hit success club. Like she like rolled in at the end. Yay! She made it happen. Um, quite a few coaches did this month actually. Awesome. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's all I got. Uh, that's all we got. Um, 
I, well, hopefully this helped and you'll see a lot of traction. So just do it all over again tomorrow. That's the key thing. Do it every single day or most days. Sometimes I skip Sunday, honestly. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate your time and I hope you guys have a good night and we'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye.